guys, welcome back to my channel. I mentioned recently in my natural hair care video, which if you haven't seen that video, Natural Newbie, go ahead and take a look. I'll go ahead and link that below. But I mentioned in that video that I bought a house. So yes, I'm really excited. I did buy a house. It's a large reason as to why I've been so busy and haven't been able to film consistently. And in today's video, I wanna share with you some of the tips that I have for buying a house in this crazy market and also in the middle of a pandemic. So if you're interested, please keep watching. So I closed on my house uh, earlier on in the month of May and I've been so busy. It happened really fast, but actually not really because I had been looking for a house um, since last year, November, but I was not prepared for how crazy the housing market was. So although I didn't just decide to buy a house and I had been researching and planning for a while, the actual like process went by really, really fast and I think that's that's due to how crazy the market was. So the tips I'm going to be sharing are based off of my personal experience. They may not apply to everyone, but I think that they're good things to have in mind. Now realize that I'm not a licensed real estate agent. I am not a licensed mortgage insurer. I'm just a person who bought a house. That's it. So tip number one, and something that I would recommend a thousand times over, and I'm sure you already know this, is to have a good realtor. I went through two realtors before I ended up with the one that I purchased my house with and it was hard. I would suggest that you find a realtor that listens to you and that you're able to have good communication with. Find a realtor that treats you like a person and not just like a client or a number. To me, a good realtor shows you homes that are within your price point first and then they focus on your needs and then your wants. What you don't want to happen is that you end up looking at homes that are just like insanely gorgeous, but maybe not something financially realistic to you. And then the realtor trying to find a way to work with you to make it fit into your price point. I would say a good realtor helps you find a house that's already within your price point that's not going to overextend you. Which is actually super great because in this market you're almost certainly going to go over. Um, of course it depends on where you're looking for a house but if you live in one of these booming areas and I'm, I am bought a house in the DMV area and we have a lot of things going on, DC is always, always a hot price market so definitely prices here are definitely always high and two we have a lot of businesses especially new ones um, like we have Amazon that came into Northern Virginia so Virginia has skyrocketed as well and then we have a lot of people that left DC because of the pandemic and their jobs are no longer in the office so it's made Maryland and VA prices also skyrocket up so knowing that the housing market here in my area was really expensive I needed somebody that was going to listen to me but also kind of like keep me on the straight and narrow you want a realtor that's going to be patient with you that's going to help you understand the steps that are going by and that's not going to lead you in a situation where at the end of the day you're going to regret your decisions and everybody else is gone they've got their commission the mortgage is closed and now here you are stuck unhappy with this huge lifetime commitment my second tip is to make sure you understand the differences between your wants and your needs and this is something that my realtor and i really worked close on like working through as we began to look for the house but it's also something that if you can also have a good understanding before you go into this it'll be super helpful there's a lot of things that you feel might be needs but they're actually wants for example you want to live within a certain amount of distance away from your job is that a need or is that a want? Those are the things that you should think about. If you know that living 10 to 15 minutes from your job means you're going to have to factor in an extra 10 to 15,000, ask yourself, can you afford that additional 10 to 15,000? Is that going to hurt you in the long run or is it going to be something that you can be flexible on? Another thing that I would also ask myself is, how long do you plan on being at that job? And if you're not going to be in that same job for the time that you're going to be in the house, then does it really matter how close you are to that particular job? So make a list of your wants and your needs. 
For me, some of my wants were I wanted to be close to Washington, D.C. That was a want. I wanted a backyard. That was a want. I wanted hardwood floors. I tried to reduce my list to be as realistic as possible. Of course, I had a whole bunch of wants at first, like, oh, I want bay windows, and I want a modern farmhouse, and I want a two-door garage driveway. All wants. None of those are needs. My needs were a little bit different. I need to stay under this price point for my monthly mortgage. I did my best to make sure that my housing was no more than 35% of my salary. And then my particular third need was I need to be in a certain distance from my family. So I had three needs and three wants. And that is how I went forward with my realtor on finding my home. My third point is actually probably one of the most important things and that is have a firm understanding of your pricing, of your price point, of your budget. It is so easy to fall in love with houses that are beautiful, that are more like the way you envision yourself when you think about living in a house, but that's gonna break the bank. And like I mentioned earlier, in this market, in this DC, Maryland, Virginia market, it's a price war. It's a bidding war. I went into this situation knowing that I could afford my rent that I pay now, so I'd like to keep my mortgage around the same rate. Knowing that I need to have a little bit of extra cushion because now this is my house, right? So I need to be able to accommodate for if certain things might come up, making sure you have some type of a savings or some type of a like wiggle room within your budget to accommodate for those last minute things or unknown things and just giving you that peace of mind of I am not going broke every single month because I'm paying for some place to live that I cannot afford. Another thing for me was to know that I need to be able to afford it on my own. If I'm able to add another source of income to the mortgage, then that's great, you know, I get to save money, but it's not something that I'm going to be dependent on. So let's say um, I get a roommate. Having a roommate's income, that's wonderful, right? I get to save some dollars, save some coins, and who doesn't love saving coins? But if I don't have a roommate, I'm not gonna die. And that's what I mean when I say understanding your price point and your budget. Because like I mentioned earlier, after everything is said and done, everybody's gone, and you're left with that bill. So I want you to be happy, and I want you to be financially stable and comfortable, okay? My fourth tip and my final tip is to have patience. At the same time, be flexible. This market is really crazy, um, and I know it's dependent on where you live. I have a girlfriend who just bought a house in Indiana. She said it was very easy for them over there. I have three other people who just bought houses in DC, and they said it was a mess and it was draining for them. I know for me, it was really difficult. It was really emotional, some of this. You think you're gonna get a house, um, and then maybe you don't get it. I definitely went through about three different homes before I found this home. I had made three different offers and I either got outbid in it or I was asked to uh, accommodate some requests that I just wasn't comfortable with and so I lost out on homes that I thought were for me. But actually they were never for me because this home that I ended up purchasing, everything fell into place. But I would say that I had to have extreme patience I had to have extreme flexibility as well. Um, I had to know that if I'm willing to compromise on things or if I'm not willing to compromise on things. I think buying a home, there's definitely some compromise that needs to be there between you, the buyer, and you, the seller. But there are also things that you need to be able to stand firm and say, no, this is this is important to me. I'm not, For example, I'm not gonna waive inspection. If that's something that's important to you, then you need to stick by that. So you need to have a full understanding of what your wants and needs are, like I said for point number two, but you also need to be a little bit flexible or to have patience in knowing that either if you are firm in something and that's not where you're moving, you're not gonna budge from that, then maybe you're not gonna find the thing that you want right away. If you have all this flexibility, maybe you will find the thing you want right away, but what's that gonna mean for you in the long run? So just having this kind of understanding um, that you need to be patient for the right home to come and yet you also need to be flexible to compromise on the differences between your wants and needs, I would say that's something that you really need to consider when you're buying a house. So I'm gonna be starting this new series, Hard and Home, to hopefully be able to document the move um, from living in this apartment to moving into our townhouse. 
I'm getting some work done in that house so I'm hopefully gonna be able to document some of that too but I'm really happy that it's finally over and that the next part of the journey is just now beginning but the hard part has happened I got the house Whew, the coins have been spent the keys are mine and I'm super proud of myself because this is something that I've always wanted to do for myself um, and I'm really proud to have been able to do so. So I hope you guys will stick along on this journey and I look forward to going through the process of Heart and Home with you all. And if you have any comments, questions, please leave it below. Don't forget to follow me on social media. All my handles are at, at FitBeautySusie. And good luck if you're looking for a house. Congratulations if you've already purchased a house. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye, chamatane, bye bye.